Hello and welcome back to All Things Money. I'm your host, David Blaine. And during this week's show, we're talking about where your tax dollars go. Uh, hopefully everybody's got their taxes filed. April 17th is the deadline. If, if not, uh, you can extend it, file an automatic extension for up to six months. Uh, if you're an individual, five months for partnership returns. Of course, it does not extend the time to pay. All money is due April the 15th. Uh, but you can get an extension of time to file. So we talked at last segment about where your federal tax dollars goes, the $3.9 trillion that the federal government spent last year. If you missed it, head on over to the website, www.dlblaine.com, and we post archives of all our shows there so you can um, listen to them at your leisure, take notes, uh, there's a wealth of information there. You really should uh, check it out. Um, okay, so we talked about how medic, medical costs, health care, consumes 22% of the federal budget. It's the number one item, and it's also the fastest growing item. And unless we do something to control it, it's going to continue to spiral out of control. Um, I happen to believe that giving the federal government more control of health care is not the solution to reducing the amount the federal government spends on health care. Uh, at number two comes in Social Security, uh, tied with defense, both at 20%. So between Social Security, defense, and health care, you've got 62% of the federal government going to those three programs. If we factor in uh, what we call the safety net programs, things like uh, unemployment insurance, food and nutrition programs, housing assistance, other programs that kind of go, you know, part of that safety net that go to individuals, I mean, these are checks that go to individuals, that consumes another 13%. We have interest on the debt is uh, 6%. So the borrowing that um, has occurred consumes 6%. So if you look at health care, Social Security, the safety net programs, which are basically the federal government writing a check to another U.S. citizen. Approximately half of Americans receive a check every month from the government. Uh, that's about 60. If you factor in defense spending, that's about 80 percent of the federal budget. And so when there are a lot of these discussions about where to cut and things like that, they focus in. I was today, you know, it was the last flight of the space shuttle here. Um, and I just think it's such a shame we canceled the space program. When you look at the federal budget, it's such a drop in the bucket. I mean, it is nothing. And we shouldn't waste money like the, the GSA scandal currently going on. You shouldn't be wasting money. But people pick on these little programs, and they just the big elephant in the room never gets um, tackled. So 80% of your tax dollars are going to Social Security, health care, safety net, interest, and defense spending. Uh, federal retirees and veterans consume another 7% uh, of the budget. So if you take that out, all the other programs, you know, the parks and transportation, roads, education, foreign aid, science, research, everything else is 10%. Uh, that's right. So all these myriad of, of programs and things, if you uh, is about 10 percent. It's Social Security, Medicare, retiree, veterans benefits, safety net programs, and defense spending is 90 percent of the government. And those are uh, largely the things that, that nobody uh, addresses. Uh, anyway, some good information out there that comes from the Congressional Budget Office that, uh, or I'm sorry, the GPO, Government Printing Office, that prints the 250-page federal budget. Um, Another thing since it's tax time I, I wanted to get to, we still got a few minutes, was to talk about these uh, mega millionaires. Last week, or maybe it was two weeks ago, the nation was enthralled with this mega millionaire jock jackpot, and it was, oh, it was March 30th, and it was $656 million jackpot. And there were apparently three winners, or I should say there were three winning tickets, and honestly, I... Uh, I don't really pay attention to the, the lottery itself, and I, I know there were three winners. I don't know if some of that was shared or anything like that, but um, when you win the lottery, I want to talk about the tax implications. It's kind of fun to look at this. Um, 
they can receive an annuity. Uh, each one, each person. Now we're going to break this. So break the jackpot into three. Uh, they could receive an annuity that would pay out about two hundred and nineteen million dollars over twenty six years. So they offer an annuity payout that pay you a certain amount every year for twenty six years, and of course the person would pay tax each year that they received a payout. However, if they select the cash option, and if you look at the numbers, it's really the only common sense choice is to take the money. Um, from a financial standpoint, if you crunch the numbers. Um, so their $219 million would collect about $128 million before taxes, okay? So you take the, the jackpot, $656 million, assumes that the person takes the annuity. If you take the cash immediately, automatically, the, the payout is nowhere near the $219 million, that's one-third. It drops to $128 million before tax. Okay, now comes the fun part. Uh, of course, jackpots are fully taxable, so they would be taxed at a maximum federal rate of 35%. So on their $128 million cash payout, the winner would pay the IRS about $45 million, and that leaves about $83 million. Now, let's say they're unlucky enough to live in a state with personal income tax. I think one of the people was from uh, Maryland and one was from Illinois, and we have clients in both those places. And I can tell you, uh, especially in Maryland, it's quite a robust tax. Um, so if we just take an average of a 7% uh, tax rate, now they'll owe the, the state tax collector about $9 million, and so that leaves about $74 million left for them. Uh, one of the reasons that a lot of these lotto winners end up bankrupt is they don't have anyone that explains this to them, and they go out and they spend the money, and they, they end up going bankrupt. Now, despite having lost $54 million to the IRS and state, um, let's say you decide to give some of that money away to your loved ones. Uh, now, there's a $5.12 million exemption, but let's say you give away $25 million the federal gift tax is 35%, uh, so that's about another $7 million. So you can't even give the money away without losing it. So you pay the income tax, and then you try to start giving the money away. Of course, if you die, there's also federal estate taxes. Um, it gets even worse next year if you win the money due to the new taxes. Anyway, uh, that's all the time we have for today's show. I hope you enjoyed it, and we will see you again same time next week. The proceeding was a paid program. The opinions expressed are not necessarily those of WNBU and Interbanks Media.